the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for July 16. No name storms are active right now. Two remnant ghostly tropical cyclone remnants exist in the eastern Pacific in the form of X-Christina and X-6E. Elsewhere, the world is fairly quiet right now. 34 storms have formed so far this year. In the Atlantic Ocean, day 46 of hurricane season, we've marked a 10% chance for an area of low pressure emerging off the African coast towards the Cape Verde Islands. Could develop according to the GFS model. Not much more support though from the other models. Day 63 in the Eastern Pacific, Christina and 6E there, and a 20% area to its east. National Hurricane Center also on board with that. In the Western Pacific, we're now down to that one area of interest in the central part of the ocean. Um, that will pass Guam and into the Philippine Sea and could be a weak system. In the Southern Hemisphere, we're still keeping eyes on that 40% chance now in the Tasman Sea, a potential subtropical cyclone very deep low down there right now. Looking at the Atlantic Ocean then, you can see that uh, a wave has appeared off the coast of Africa and uh, something to do with the energy from this wave is what the GFS is seeing and the wave behind it somehow combining to become a tropical cyclone might sound a little bit far-fetched, maybe it is, but we've marked 10% just in case. Gulf of Mexico looking fairly quiet, a few thunderstorms blowing up though, particularly across southern and central Florida and for one or two coastal areas of the Gulf to the north as well. In the eastern Pacific you can see those two remnants. It's looking a very sorry state right now, the eastern Pacific Ocean. It's had three weak tropical storms and three tropical depressions. Um, they've really been struggling. Well, Christina of course did get the 70 miles per hour, uh, but we're still waiting for that first hurricane over there, which usually has happened by now. In the Western Pacific, that 20% chance still possibly applying to that wave down there to the south of Guam, possibly something further back. Um, but we'll keep our eyes on what goes on there. Over the Philippines, a little disturbance blew through there as well in the last 24 hours. We marked a 10% on that yesterday. And in the South Pacific, you've got very good rotation with that extratropical cyclone. Look at the size of that thing, 40%. Its influence extending pretty much from Brisbane, Australia, all the way to the southern part of New Zealand. And in the Indian Ocean, we've got the monsoonal pattern continuing now more towards western India today. Um, and quite a few thunderstorms over the ocean as well. Sea surface temperatures still fairly good in the eastern Pacific, except where those two recent storms have tracked. Um, 28 to 30 degrees Celsius generally in the deep tropics. The Atlantic Ocean continues to warm up even more. You can see there a whole path now extending from Louisiana round to the Florida Keys of 30 degrees Celsius waters or higher and the Gulf Stream really starting to get some 30s in there as well. I think maybe even some 32s off the southern part of Cuba, so temperatures really soaring now in the Atlantic. The Indian Ocean uh, still looking fairly warm, mainly in the Bay of Bengal, 28 to 30 degrees Celsius, but we don't expect tropical activity in this area for a while. And the Western Pacific is still ready and waiting to accept any more typhoons. Um, it's a very quiet start to the season so far, despite the Category 3 Vong Fong that we had in May. Um, but you can see the oceans are ready to support more significant cyclones when we get later in the season. And looking at those sea surface temperature anomalies, the South China Sea really stands out by the way. Very warm above average temperatures. East Pacific half and half again. The Atlantic is not too much above average, but still significantly so. And a little bit more in the main development region as well, towards the Eastern Atlantic there. Look out for that region too. On July 16th, 1996, we had the remnants of Hurricane Bertha and Super Typhoon Eve, which peaked with winds, force 13 estimate of 155 miles per hour. Pressure, I believe, fell to the 920s, a very rapidly intensifying storm. And there's a picture of it not too far from its peak intensity. Eve would then go on to affect uh, Japan, moving towards the islands today. I think it would make landfall there on the 17th or the 18th as a typhoon, weakening before it gets there. So with nothing on the radar right now, the next name in the Atlantic is Gonzalo, followed by Hannah. 
In the Eastern Pacific, we're looking out for Douglas, followed by Elida. In the Central Pacific, the next name on list one is Hone, followed by Iona. In the Western Pacific then, the agonizing wait continues for Sinlaku, Hagapit follows that, and in the North Indian Ocean, the next name on list one is Gatti, followed by Nivar. In the Southern Hemisphere, if things roar to life anytime soon, doubtful, Imogen's next in the Australian region. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, the first names are Alicia and Bongoyo, and in the South Pacific, it's Yolanda. That's all for now, we'll have another Tropical Weather Bulletin tomorrow. Check out our new look cyclone tracker on the Force 13 website for the latest up-to-date information. You can also find us of course on our YouTube channel, search Force 13, and also on Facebook and Twitter, Force 13 at Force 13 on Twitter for the latest updates. You can also help the project become even better by becoming an ultimate fan on YouTube. To see the full list of Ultimate Fan Benefits and to join, visit youtube.com forward slash force 13 slash join. With a special thanks to our top supporters this month. You can also check out our growing merch store so you can show Force 13's colours wherever you go. You can also find a link to our Discord server underneath this video in the description.